All right. Thank you, Mike. We are in Corvallis. NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. This is an elimination game. And the shock right now in this community around this program that Oregon State, the defending national champs, taking on Creighton. The Beavers are a loss away from elimination. And here's how the bracket shapes out. Michigan yesterday got a terrific mound effort and three home runs, shut out Creighton. Creighton now against Oregon State and that Cincinnati game, one for the ages last night, an enormous upset. The Oregon State Beavers, first regional opener loss since 1986, and that was against Arkansas. Rich Waltz along with Kevin Stalker here. So the Beavers trying to bounce back, and they're going with one of their big guns, Grant Gambrell. Stock, what do you got? Well, you know, he's a big guy in a, in a big game. A fastball, really good curveball, a little bit of changeup. You won't see it a whole lot. You know, he has been great. Now, he had a little little tenderness in his arm early May since coming back has been fantastic. I know in talking with the Creighton coaches, they were a little concerned about his fastballs and his hard stuff away. That'll be something we'll have to watch. Now, this is a Creighton offense that can score runs. They won 13 of their last 14 headed into the tournament. Couple guys to watch in the middle, Jake Holton and Will Robertson. You know, these guys have to, achieve, have to change their approach from yesterday. Yesterday, just not aggressive. And this team got here by big swings, being aggressive early in the count. Yesterday, it was not good. Just six singles, and that's it against Michigan. And only one runner for the Blue Jays reached second base the entire game. And this one is underway. Elimination game here in Corvallis. Michigan and Cincinnati will meet tonight. Isaac Collins, switch hitting second baseman. Good on base percentage. And he takes outside. And quickly it's 2-0. Oh. Gambrell, big kid, 6'4", 205. High school quarterback. Big arm, great stuff. And he was better in Pac-12 play than he was in non-conference play this year. Off to a slow start. Pretty common for some of the pitchers up in this area when they have to go down south or things like that to try to get it going. 2-1 is smacked down that right field line and foul. You know, as, as we got in here today, we were able to kind of buzz around the ballpark a little bit, go down to the dugouts, and it, it was a common theme on both sides about... It's a quick flush. You know, you play yesterday, you got to be able to flush that game. They understand the levity of it. Both teams were talking about that. That's a challenge in an elimination game because obviously the stakes are pretty high. And in watching that Cincinnati game last night, it felt like Cincinnati was playing to win and Oregon State was playing not to lose. But that's a great example. And it can be tough to flush. In the air, Kyler McMahon is there, and he makes the catch. This is a very different team than won the national championship last year. Last year, it was an offensive juggernaut. This year, pitching is probably the strength for Oregon State. Pat Bailey, the interim coach, see the RPI rank. Nine of their last 14 games, they have lost, and that's an issue. Right now, the Beavers are searching for some rhythm, searching it for something that clicks. Parker Upton, switch hitter, left fielder. And he lines one into right field for a base hit. And the Blue Jays have a runner. And the Blue Jays also have some guys that won some awards, including this guy, Jake Holton, is the Big East Player of the Year. He was quiet yesterday, one for four with a single. Holton is a California guy who ended up in Omaha has been a terrific addition. 14 homers, and on base over 500, and he slugged 726. Those are huge numbers. Been interested to see if he can make his adjustment. Yesterday, Michigan was just pounding him in with two strikes, and he couldn't make the adjustment. And that not that is not Gambrell's game. He's not one to throw in because he loses it a lot inside to righties. Hard. He'll hit guys, so he likes to stay away. Blue Jays. The only Big East team in the tournament. They won the Big East tournament. They were the regular season champs as well. Oh! 
There's that inside fastball you talked about. And the Blue Jays have kind of revamped their roster in the last couple of years as Ed Service has gone after bigger, stronger, faster athletes. And it shows. They, they hit 60 home runs this year, which is a vast improvement from last year. Houghton pulls that foul. It's fun to talk to Ed about that, too, because he says, hey, we, we needed to score more runs. They play in a big ballpark at Omaha. But he also said, you know, I was exhausted after every game having to coach so hard from the first inning on. Bunts and hit and runs and working the staff, trying to find ways to score. And so that was finally, he said, you know what? We got to figure out how to score runs in bunches. And that was part of that recruiting change they had years ago. And the count three and one, great hitters count. The Parker Upton at first, we're just underway in Corvallis. Nobody expected Oregon State to be playing this afternoon in an elimination game, especially the Beaver faithful who were wild last night in that Cincinnati upset. Okay. Yeah, it was interesting to listen to Pat Bailey, head coach for Oregon State today, as he, he was talking about his team. Remember, this is an Oregon State team that is used to this pressure and used to this atmosphere. And he said, you know what? It was like we were playing in a prison yesterday. We were, we were tight. We were bound up. I mean, I thought, I've never heard that comparison before. And he just had a mini and said, guys, we got to get back to playing like we're in a playground. And that's the attitude that he wants from them. And that, that's a lot tougher to do as a player, especially when your back's against the wall. But you have to try to preach that. Upton has stolen eight bases this year. That was the trademark of Oregon State last year. Not only at the College World Series, but getting to the College World Series. They won a total of six elimination games to bring home that national championship. I do think that that team last year, it's tough to compare to that team. They were so good one through nine. Everybody had a role. They knew what they were going to play every day. And plus, if, if they did get down, they figured the next guy was going to do it. This team's a little different offensively. There's really two to three guys that are really kind of carrying the load offensively. Good lead by Upton, and he's running. Swing and a miss. Rutschman's throw is not in time. And a stolen base, but a strikeout. Upton in scoring position. Now for the Blue Jays, Holton goes down swing, but you've got Robertson as well. And these are the guys that really drove the bus offensively this year. Start looking and talking about the draft, which is coming up. Will Robertson is getting all kinds of buzz. Tremendous power, still learning how to hit. Pat Bailey went out and spoke with the home plate umpire, Derek Mollica, whether he's challenging at home plate or was talking about maybe... Batter's interference. Here's the look, the catch. I think he's in. And the tag did not stay on him. Boy, that is really close. What a nice play here. You see, I think that's Armstrong making it. All right, while they review it, let's head to the studios and say hello to Chris Cotter. Hi, Chris. Well, Chris, it's Elimination Day or this morning for all these teams that had such great high hopes going into yesterday. It's not impossible when you lose your first game to get to a Super Regional, but it can be really tough. And, and for Oregon State and Adley Rutschman, they're going to have to win four ball games here if they want to keep playing. Looks like the review has wrapped up. Don't know that you could overturn or confirm. We'll see if it's a call stands or call is confirmed. Call stands. So not enough to overturn. 
was a good quick tag. And it looked like the hand was in. Yeah. I mean, I think it, clearly it's so hard to tell in that situation. Plus, he tagged him high, so already that's going to be a little disadvantage for you. And already the Blue Jays have accomplished what it took them nine innings to do yesterday, <laughs> and that's get a runner to second base. That's how dominant the starting pitcher for Michigan, Carl Kaufman, was yesterday. Kaufman went eight and two thirds through 123 pitches. He was brilliant. Robertson now. Will Robertson. The junior. Uh, while the replay was going on, they gave Robertson first base, and so this is Jack Strunz. Well, again, you're talking about Creighton, who I think has the best three, four hitters. Any opportunity to pitch around them, put them on, I think Oregon State will take advantage of that. Gets away from Rutschman, rolls towards the Blue Jay dugout. Upton now at third, Robertson now at second, and Strunz with a 1 1 count. You know, Jack Strunz really is known for his defense. He's solidified the middle of this crate in order, but he goes in spurts. In fact, in the conference tournament, he was on fire. He had all kinds of hits, 9 for 14. The one thing about Jack is he's somewhat of a guess hitter. If he guesses right, he'll get you, but he does strike out quite a bit because of that. And obviously a little more pressure on Rutschman and on Gambrell with a runner at third. <laughs> Count two and one. Creighton trying to get on the board. And Strunz hits it in the air. Bo Phillip, the shortstop. And he makes the catch. Blue Jays threaten. Beavers get their first swings. Coming up. Ed Service has done such a nice job at Creighton. He and his coaching staff, the Big East coaching staff, of the year and they're the Big East champions regular season and tournament always known as a great defensive team and they have the third best fielding percentage and they've been hot they won 13 of 14 to get here Evan Johnson gets the task of taking on the defending national champs he's not big in stature he's 5'11 but he's got big stuff fastball slider curveball he's going to challenge today very cerebral pitcher so he studied every one of these hitters Adley yeah, Rutschman certainly is the guy you worry about, but the top and the bottom of the order performed pretty well against Cincinnati. Both Tyler Malone and Kyler McMahon had their first home runs of the season. I think Zach Taylor, you see him at first base. If they can get him going in this, in this game and beyond, I think that'll be huge for them. Pat Bailey's lineup last night, and it holds true today. Get his many guys that can get on base in and around Rutschman. And Malone's on base percentage 393. McGarry behind him is 399. And then you've got Bo Phillips slotted in the four spot behind Rutschman. And the headline really about last night was the intentional walk with the bases loaded for Rutschman. The headline should have been that was an incredible college baseball game that had the intentional walk with the bases. Uh, so many things happened last night. So many big plays. And Cincinnati pulled off a stunning upset. One of those biggest plays, Pat Bailey even talked about it yesterday. Malone leading off the game was robbed from Jeremy Johnson on a diving play in center. Foul ball there. But he even talked about it. He said, Pat said, look, I, that ball goes over his head. First batter of the game for Oregon State yesterday. It's a different game because he believes he just scored two or three runs that inning. And Malone had a really nice night swinging the bat because if the, that ball does get over his head, he ends up with a three for four game with a, at least a double in addition to the home run that he hit. Yeah. I asked him today about leading off because typically last year he, he wasn't a leadoff. They had Stephen Kwan, of course, who was one of those draft picks that took off. So he was lower in the lineup. And this year 
They were hoping he could be protection behind Rutschman. So I got talking to him about leading off, and he said, oh, yeah, well, I led off, you know, all the time through high school. I'm used to it like crazy. So they came in, and they actually had him out of a position hitting middle of the lineup. Now they put him back up at the top. He's, he likes it. Sometimes it's hard to find numbers that translate into the NCAA tournament. One of the things that jumps out about Evan Johnson, he pitched very, very well on the road. He had a lot of road wins in and out of conference. Got him inside corner. Evan Johnson strikes out Tyler Malone. You won't see a better defense in NCAA baseball. These guys are terrific, and they always have been ever since Ed Service has been their head coach. Solid, solid on the corners. Jordan Hovey made a couple of plays. Brilliant at coming in, bare hand. That's kind of his M.O. Jake Holton, I thought yesterday's game, made a couple of nice plays at first base. Gotten so much better with his footwork just around the bag. Here's McGarry now. He hits in, in front of Rutschman, and we talked about on-base percentage, but he brings plenty of thump to that two-spot as well. All or nothing, Rich, for him. It's, it's a strikeout or either a double. I mean, that's what they know they're going to get in the two-hole, and they're okay with that. So, in other words, as a hitter, he might strike out a lot. you got to go, okay, that's part of the game plan with Rutschman on deck. Long way to go for Collins, and he can't get there. And now we'll get, I guess, a glimpse of how Ed Service and Creighton are going to pitch to Rutschman. Rutschman, of course, many people feel will be the number one overall pick in the Major League Draft on Monday night. Golden Spikes finalist, player of the year in the Pac-12. And a guy that Baseball America calls the best draft prospect in a long time since Bryce Harper. Fastball in on his hands, and it's 0-1. Boy, if that's an indication of how they're going to pitch and pitch, they're going to pitch him in and hard. It's one of the things about Evan Johnson. He's got a little bit of of giddy up a little bit of hide to his pitches it can get on you a little bit one thing and you talked about all those road wins for him he throws a lot of pitches so it's trying to get him to extend through the game long enough sometimes it's 90 pitches in the fifth inning they're trying to work on that 70 strikeouts in 13 starts so it's a high strikeout but with that comes the high pitch count yeah and look both coaches said it we know it it is a quick hook to anybody that struggles today. This is an elimination game. So if your starter starts to wobble, the bullpen will be in action. Oh, to the Rutschman. Got him with a fastball, 91. A little in, and then he busted him out. The location and the pitch selection that he's throwing is perfect. He goes in to start the at-bat. The second at bat, a little off speed, and then he blows him away with a competitive pitch on the outside corner. It's a very good pitch. He didn't look like he was intimidated at all. No, no problem. No. Breaking ball strike to both Philip, the shortstop. Philip is a a terrific hitter himself. Five home runs at the 314 average. Sneaky power. I think Oregon State was a little surprised, disappointed that he was left off the all conference selection lists. Runner bluffs. And Phillip takes out. You know, Bo Phillip came in as a junior caller transfer, but the other thing about that is he came in thinking Pat Casey was going to be here. Now imagine you're, you come in, and the day you get ready to start fall ball, Pat Casey retires, and it's Pat Bailey. Credit to him, he came in 
And that's where the team leadership from this Oregon State team kind of took over and took him under his wing, and he's loved it. Hasn't skipped a beat. And yes, he has offense, but defensively, we saw him last night. He was credited with a couple of errors. But coming into this four-game regional, only had four errors at shortstop. That's, that's almost unheard of. I and mean, that's replacing Caden Gren Grenier, who was in the first round last year. That's quality stuff. Well, and that's the point, too. People look at the, the change from Casey to Bailey, but they oftentimes don't cite the fact that the Beavers had three players taken in the first round of the draft last year and lost six players total in the first ten rounds. Three and one now. And this is the Evan Johnson where the pitch count can get up. They're your first round players. That's a lot of talent to lose. And I think they're tearing it up. I've, I've seen a lot of highlights with Madrigal stealing all kind of bases. Larnick's hitting some. I mean, they love Larnick. The Twins do. Two outs, 3-1. And it's up. So a strikeout of Rutschman, but a walk to Phillip. And up comes Zach Taylor. Remember when, when we were talking about that lineup, I pointed, I, I still think Zach Taylor could be a key to this game because once you get through Rutschman and then you get through Bo Phillip, you've got Taylor who's really been struggling. But he had a big hit last night, and you hope he can kind of continue that for a few games. I think throughout this game, you'll see Creighton kind of pitch around the guys at the top of this lineup. Taylor, a huge moment last night in a game that was filled with those type of moments. Lined a single to left to tie the game at five. And that was the roller coaster of emotion for this madhouse of a crowd that was here last night. The Beavers were down early and stunned that Cincinnati had jumped to a 5-2 lead. Came back, tied it, took the lead, only to have Cincinnati rise up, tie it, and themselves get it a run in the ninth inning to win it. And the Beavers down a run in the, in the bottom of the ninth actually had Rutschman leading off that inning. They had the bats they wanted coming up. But Cincinnati was just unbelievable last night. It'll be fun to see them tonight against Michigan. Yeah, they were fun to watch, weren't they? Their, their energy. How they just kind of go for broke. Coach Guggins coaches that way as well. Obviously, you saw that with the intentional walk to Rutschman. Breaking ball misses down low. There's no question that inside of Zach Taylor is a really good hitter because he showed it last year under pressure, College World Series. Beavers first and second, two outs. On the ground, gobbled up there. Struntz goes to second in time. Both teams threatened, no runs yet in Corvallis. NCAA Baseball Regionals is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Applebee's new loaded fajitas. Gorgeous weather here in Corvallis. Three-time national champs, back-to-back -back 06, 07, and of course, last year beating Arkansas in the championship series of the College World Series. This is one of 16 regional sites across the landscape of college baseball. The winner of each site will match up in what is called a super regional, where you play two of three, and the winner of those super regionals We'll all head to the promised land, home of the Creighton Blue Jays, home park of the Creighton Blue Jays in Omaha in the College World Series. Jordan Hovey, David Vilches, and Jason Alberry for the Creighton Blue Jays of the Big East Conference. I love the, the format that they have going, especially with the Supers. One of the things about playoff baseball, that's what I call this, playoff baseball, and we talked about it yesterday, was the idea that your stats throughout the season don't matter. And I had plenty of years where I stunk hitting, or these guys have trouble. It just matters. All it matters is wins and losses, and you pull for each other. The hardest part's getting here, but once you're here, then you just got to be hot. And as yesterday showed in day one, you don't have to be the one seed in your regional 
even though all, most, all the one seeds except Oregon State won. It was not a good day to be a two seed yesterday. And you can be a three or a four in a regional and get to the promised land. All right. News and notes. If you were, a, uh, if you were one of the last four in, which we had one of those in Michigan, it was a good day. They were 4-0, and Michigan, TCU, Florida State, and Duke. We'll see Michigan tonight against Cincinnati. As I told you, the, the one seeds, or the national seeds, were 14-1. Uh, and one. East Carolina is playing today. Oregon State, the only loss from that group. The breaking ball from Grant Gambrell. David Vilches is behind in the count, 0-1. Yeah, I loved your point. You don't have to. The seating a lot of times is just for scheduling at times, right? When I mean, you get in here, the players don't look at that. You see a lot of the those three C's just come into play. A lot of home runs hit yesterday. And the teams that are the last to get in. Last year, Washington, your alma mater, you were an All-American for the Huskies. Washington was one of the, the teams that, you know, kind of felt fortunate to get there. And they ended up in the College World Series. They ended up in Omaha. That's a foul ball. Vilches was one for four yesterday. Yeah, they, they were a team just like a Cincinnati team who got hot at the right time. The month of May, they tore it up. University of Washington last year. RPI didn't really help them at all, but they got in and made the most of it. And that's one of the things about teams that win their conference tournaments. They're typically hot. So they win the tournament, maybe get the automatic bid. Those are hot teams. Sometimes the, the teams that are at-large teams aren't so hot, but they still get in. That was off the end of the bat. McMahon broke back and now is in. And makes the catch. This week, Sunday Night Baseball in New York. Series finale, Red Sox, Yankees. Coverage starts 6 Eastern on ESPN. The ESPN app, Baseball Tonight, Sunday Night Countdown. Got a David Price, Masahiro Tanaka matchup. Red Sox, Yankees. Tomorrow night, as Jason Albury stands in, this is his first live action in about a month. Albury broke his jaw. Trying to bunt, had a pitch come in and catch him in the jaw. You can see the protector that he's got on his helmet. Finds himself in the eighth spot, and he rips one into left field. That's good to see. Because when you get hit up in the face, psychologically, returning to the game can be an issue. Especially in the lower half of this lineup, where Creighton, I think, would love to get some production. They have him back in there. Big guy to be able to be aggressive and not afraid of it. They're going to love that. Will Hannafan, speaking of Red Sox and Yankees, all the incredible things that happened last night. The, the big hits, the play at the plate, the comeback, the intentional walk with the bases loaded. Totally forgot. Kevin Euclid and his pregame speech for Cincinnati was just incredible last night. And he'll be here tonight to watch Cincinnati take on Michigan. Comebacker. Gambrell flips to first. And Gambrell looks sharp. We are scoreless in Corvallis. When a sellout crowd walked out of here last night in shock with the Oregon State loss to Cincinnati, a lot of questions were, now what? And so research shows you, you lose that first game and your odds of advancing to the Super Regional are down at 8%. And that's since the current format was adopted back in 1999. George Mendezona, first pitch swinging, fouls it back, out of play. Mendezona, the sophomore out of Redmond, Washington. That's a suburb of Seattle. A lot of Oregon State bloodlines with him. Both of his grandfathers played here at Oregon State. Henry Mendez in Corvallis. One one. Inside corner. You can see the stuff. The ball explodes out of Johnson's right hand. 
Yeah, and he has to trust that stuff. The first inning had 20 pitches. It's good to see him start the second inning with strikes, quick strikes. Gilbert, Iowa, and Iowa Central Community College. Breaking ball, Mendezota lifts at left field. Parker Upton is there. We do have a little bit of wind today, but uh, the ball in this ballpark has a tendency, as is the case with most ballparks, to travel better in the day than it does at night. But there were a lot of home runs hit in both games last night and yeah. yesterday. Yeah, and, and we would, had a lot of conversations about the depth of the Oregon State outfielders, and, and we can get into that a little bit more. In fact, they, I went down and talked to them about that. Brian Gibson does all of their outfield work as far as placement. And he said, no, you know, you get a little bit of breeze here. And you talked about it, a little breeze. They will back them up. Their outfielders, they were actually surprised last night with the outfield of Cincinnati on how shallow they were playing. Andy Armstrong, the junior out of Salem, had a good game last night. Three for four with a double, knocked in a run. I think one of the things that you'll see with Creighton, their outfield won't play too deep, but Ed Service is pretty adamant. When you talk to him about hitters, he says, hey, in the college game, he believes that it's really hard for college hitter to get three hits in a row. Like that's, that's kind of a mantra. He says, oh, it's tough for some of these hitters. And then he goes, if they do get three hits, a lot of times it's just base hits. So he's like, we're going to make those guys hit it over our head. That's kind of his philosophy in the pitching side of it. If you pulled pitchers, I mean, if pitchers got to decide where to put outfielders, just about every pitcher I've ever asked, they would rather have an outfielder in. Right. Because they feel if they beat you on a pitch, they want an outfielder in a position to make that pay off. You know, back in the day, the pitchers used to be able to do that, right? <laughs> they could turn around and say, hey, you know, Stocker, move over or bring him in or they did all that. Now it's, you know, it's you pull out the thing out of your pocket and this is where you play and, and there's no discussion about it. Schilling used to move me around like it was, you know, like a moving day on a Thursday. Two, two. And for many of you who haven't watched a lot of the college game, the information age, which has obviously affected, blown up, changed a lot of what happens in the major leagues, also affects the colleges. These schools have scouting reports, many of them detailed scouting reports on hitters, spray charts. The one caveat is, there isn't a full book of information or as much information as hitters at the big league level. You can have an idea and, and maybe a, a 15 to 20 game snapshot of what a guy will do. That's not a complete look. Ball in the air down the right field line. And Robertson's there and he makes the catch. So Evan Johnson gets a couple outs. And that'll bring up Joe Casey. Well, certainly now, and even talking with the coaches here on the Creighton side, you, know, you can, some of the technology, it's just, it's amazing to me that, that they can sit down in front of a monitor with the right program and call up Adley Rutschman and see how he approaches this hitter or fastballs or counts every single one. And then you can make your notes off of that. I mean, back in the day, we had none of that, right? It was, it was all based on your advanced scouts. Of course, in college, you didn't have any of those advanced scouts. Little pop-up. Struns battling it, and he makes the catch. Nicely done. One, two, three inning for Evan Johnson. Two innings in, and scoreless. You can't uh, go too long in a game like this without acknowledging the legacy of Pat Casey, who built this program from the very bottom to the very, very top. Three national championships, five-time national coach of the year, and they added, as they continue to add on to this uh, ballpark, Casey's Corner, which is a great lounge area. We found Kevin Stocker down there moments before a game yesterday. He's looking for the barbecue. I didn't find it. I thought Pat would be there, you know, cooking up some burgers or something. Breaking ball is up. 12 NCAA trips. There's your barbecue. 
900 wins in, in 24 years. And he might not be done because, he, as you noted, he retired last year. But Pat Bailey was named the interim head coach. And there is language in, in Pat's current contract. He still works in the athletic department. He's a huge ambassador for the school. That if he wants to come back and be the head coach, he can do that. His son, of course, is in left field for Oregon State. There's a look at Isaac Collins in the leadoff spot for Creighton. You know, Pat, Pat only knows how to, how to coach and do this game one way. And that's 100%, just like the players. And I think he started to question if he still had that grit in him. And to him, that was unacceptable. It was unacceptable to start if he wasn't all in. He was, you know, a little bit of that wave. I totally get that. Same when you're trying to retire from baseball. You're like, man, I love the game, but you don't love every aspect about it anymore. If you're going to play at this level or coach at this level, not only can't, do you love the competition, you have to love the process, the practice, the recruiting, all that comes with it. Now, is he done? I think it's wise of him to take a year to see, and we'll find out certainly soon enough. Well, the good news for Oregon State is that his staff is still here. Pat Bailey's still here. Nate Yeski, a great pitching coach, is still here. That ball pulled foul and out of play. And, and look, if he comes back or if he doesn't come back, they need to name something significant in this city after him. Maybe the airport that, well, look, it's, it's the Eugene Airport, so they probably can't do that. <laughs> Find something in this city to name after him because what he's done here is absolutely incredible. Well, he has the corner. Yeah, but not enough. Not That's I in the he, ballpark. I, I think he probably made a donation towards that. I mean, name something that like he does. The bridge? Yeah. Maybe the bridge that comes there in. There you go. Yeah, yeah, right. The Pat Casey Bridge that brings you into what has become a, a hotbed of college baseball. Three national championships. High breaking ball and a deep fly to right. And Isaac Collins goes deep. Creighton is on the board, his sixth of the season, and their first run of the tournament. And not only is it the first run of the tournament, I think it's the first extra base hit for Creighton. And this ball is tanked from your leadoff hitter. Remember, we talked about yesterday, they were very guarded, swinging for contact. You can see how much looser they are today, trying to drive the baseball. Gambrell thought he had a strikeout in that at bat and didn't get the call. And a hanging breaking ball. And it's 1-0 Blue Jays. Upton takes a change up. And it's 1-0. Parker Upton. Single and a stolen base in the first. You know, you're talking about Pat, too. He, he spent those years at George Fox. He came right out of the minor leagues and went to George Fox. and was He was a basketball player there. They asked him to, to coach the baseball team and be a player. So he did that and ended up doing that, I think, for around six, seven years. Liner to left. And there's the, his son, Joe Casey, who makes the catch. Now, the rules in the NAIA back then were a little looser oh, yeah. than, than, <laughs> oh, yeah. than the NCAA. So they could, you could be creative that way. Yeah. You know, and he, at first he was like, well, I don't want to do that. And he thought, well, maybe I'll see if coaching is something that I would like. So he did both, enjoyed it. When they asked him to coach here, he said, no, not interested. Wasn't really interested. And for some reason, I didn't find out the whole story. He did change his mind and came here. And that's when he started building that program. And who replaced him there was, I think, Pat Bailey came in and was coaching at George Fox. All right, now Jake Holton. You have targeted Holton and Will Robertson as key parts for Creighton's hopes, not only in this game, but in this regional. Holton takes fastball at the knees for a strike. And it's one and one. Holton not only provides the, the power, but he provides the vibe for this team. He is a California guy. Had a great uh, run at Santa Barbara Community College. Grew up in San Jose. Took a visit to Omaha. Cal was playing there. We got to see Andrew Vaughn and Cal last year. And he committed. Loved Creighton, loved the facilities. I mean, who doesn't love the home ballpark? 
TD Ameritrade Park, home of the College World Series. Smacks it into left field. That's a base hit. And the bats are starting to come around for Creighton right now. Well, let's take a look at Jake Holton and what you get in a powerful swing. The first thing you're going to notice is going to be the big leg kick. You look at the front, you see the leg kick. Now, that is actually toned down from when he came into this program. He gets back early, and then he drops a little bit. He has a pretty long stride, but he's so strong he can get away with that. You know, when he first came into this program, though, it was, a, it was like double or triple the size of that leg kick. They had to tone him down a little bit. Robertson now intentionally walked in the first. And he gets hit. And the Blue Jays have a run and a couple base runners. And we check in with Chris Cotter. Chris. Well, it's, that's high anxiety. It's an elimination game. All these games across the, the tournament this morning and this afternoon are elimination games. Jack Struntz now with runners first and second. A run across. And Gambrell with a breaking ball for strike one. Now, Gambrell has fallen behind the last four hitters Come before that strike one. Rutschman throws behind the runner, and it's into right field. Robertson is hurt at first base. Holton gets to third. Taylor, Oregon State's first baseman, and lunging for the Rutschman throw, got tangled up with Robertson. And he is now just getting to his feet. Well, this is one of the tough things when you slide back in head first. And you know what? I think they had him picked off, but the throw went into the went into Robertson as he slides back. Take a look and see if he gets a knee right into the helmet. Yeah, he gets the, the knee, just drops around right the back of that helmet. And you're right. I, I think a good throw and he's out. Yeah. That's a, a throwing here on Rutschman, who is a really good throw guy. Rutschman is throwing out 50% of the base dealers. But he gets the error. And Creighton has an opportunity here with one out at the corners. Holton's at third. Robertson across the diamond at first. And Strunt sitting on a 1-1 pitch. Popped out back in the first inning. Oregon State's infield, the middle infield, playing for two. Line drive. Base hit over the head of Phillip. And Creighton has another run. Ball is bobbled. Racing for second. Struntz is in. Runner home. Robertson scores. 3 nothing. Well, there's Ed Service for you. The coach sitting at third base understands the situation here. Now this, now the, again, the ball gets over. This is McMahon now. He's learning how to play center field and bobbles it here. Robertson gets a terrific jump from first base and not once did Ed Service stop him from going around third base. That's experience right there from your third base coach and head coach. It was far from a clean game for Oregon State last night, both physically and mentally. And it cost them against the hungry Cincinnati team. And Creighton now... Open the door with the home run. The throwing air cracked it open a little wider. And two more across. It'll be a hit. And an E8. And that's how close oh, that was to an out.
So the long drought is over for Creighton. Shut out by Michigan yesterday. Held off the board until here, and they've got three. I think Creighton has just decided, not only are they going to swing the bats, but the idea for them, too, after maybe watching last night's game, that the more pressure they can put on the defense right now, because guys are starting to think about it, right? The outfielders are thinking about their play. The pitcher's thinking about hitting a guy. Put pressure on them, and, and it start, they start to think even more, and that's when mistakes happen. Jordan Hovey now. And he got Strunz at second. But how about Will Robertson? He gets hit. Gets hit to get on. Then he gets hit in the back of the neck. We're not, not sure how he's feeling down there. And then the next pitch gets a terrific jump and goes first to home on that entire play. So two errors and then a hit batter. And a big swing there by Hovey. And I guess a question for Pat Bailey is this. In an elimination game, you're, it's game seven, right? You, as a head coach in college or a manager in the big leagues, you can't let the game get out of hand. It's, it's your entire pitching staff is available and ready. Gambrell with a good fastball there. You know, they are ready. But the guys that he wants ready, I don't think, have the pitches in him yet. For example, Isert's down there, but I think his pitch count limit might be around 40 because he hasn't pitched a lot. And here we are only into the, you know, the third inning. So I'm not sure he wants to go to Mulholland yet. I think there's a balance where he's trying to get, who's been really good, Grant Grambell, he's, he's been so good, trying to get him at least into the fourth or fifth. Strike three called inside corner. Hovey turns to Derek Mollica, the home plate umpire. That's a big strikeout for Gambrell as he tries to get through the third. And then here's Vilchis. He flied out to center. You know, and, and honestly, Rich, if you, you and I have been watching this team, right? I mean, he's doing okay. The defense behind him, he's got to get a little help. That's it. You know, that's a, that's a terrific point. Bryce Femmel, last night's starter, deserved a better fate. His defense did not play well behind him. It just takes outside. Eight straight wins coming into the tournament. 13 of 14. Only Big East team here. Now the Big East not known as a baseball powerhouse. And that's why Creighton really had an ambitious non-conference schedule with a lot of quality opponents. They didn't have to go far. There's two other Nebraska teams in the tournament. Omaha is in. And of course Nebraska is in along with Creighton. And all three of those teams played each other a lot this year. Yeah. Creighton and Nebraska, I'd say when they play, the crowd comes. Omaha's a big stadium, but they get a lot of people. That's the one game. Whether it's snowing, cold, rain, people show up for that. Erstad against Service. Yeah. Darren Erstad, the head coach at Nebraska. And you got some uh, Creighton fans here. There were, I mean, look, Michigan fans are here. The Cincinnati group really enjoyed themselves last night. And a Creighton contingent. Saw a family yesterday with, there was four of them, three Creighton, and the dad was wearing all Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> all covered. Not only that, I noticed that they were not walking, you know, they were separated. You know, it was quite the division. Nate Yeski, the pitching coach of Oregon State, one of the best in college baseball. Right now watching his right-hander, Grant Gambrell, who had a 2.70 ERA in Pac-12 play. Strunt's a huge lead at second. And he lost him. One thing right now about Grant, and I got to tell you, and you see this quite around, I haven't seen it with him lately, is his misses are all big. So as a hitter in there, you, there, there's no offering at that pitch that's just off the zone or just up. When he misses away, he's missing so far outside, Rutschman has a hard time blocking it. 
It's a good example there. He misses. He's trying to get something to drop in there. It misses so high, there's no attempt by the hitter. 57 pitches so far, and you always, when you measure a pitcher, you measure an inning like this with a high workload. There's a line drive, short hopped, pick there, Phillips throw across the diamond, and the inning is finally over. Three runs for Creighton, Blue Jays on top in Corvallis. Thank you, Chris. That's an elimination game. So is this one. And these, of course, are the defending national champs. Oregon State is down 3-0 to Creighton. Kyler McMahon hard on the ground. Hovey across the diamond in time. Now, this regional is linked to this regional. So the winners of both Corvallis and Los Angeles will meet in a super regional. Last night, UCLA took care of Omaha. And Loyola Marymount beat Baylor 3-1. So that game tonight, UCLA and Loyola Marymount. Boy, for UCLA yesterday, Ryan Garcia, eight innings, six strikeouts. That's a significant <laughs> shot there because yeah. when we went to break, you saw the uh, youngster Dylan Pierce racing to the bullpen. And the reason he was racing is they just want him down there. So if... Uh, if things keep going the way they are, he can get ready in a hurry for Oregon State. And I think that visit right there wasn't to tell Tyler Malone, hey, here's what he's going to throw you. It was, let's take your time because our pitcher just had a 29-pitch inning and we hit the first pitch on the ground to third. Let's give our pitcher some time to decompress in the dugout. It's good coaching. And that's a strike. And that's a really good Evan pitch. Johnson. Yeah. You know, that's, and that'll go down as that one of those three offensive meetings that they get. But I think you have to be selective when you do that. And I think you make a great point, Rich, and do it there. Try to slow him down a little bit. Yeah, that's a, the stressful inning we were talking about. Certainly that applies to Grant Gambrell's third. As Creighton gets three runs. Top of the order here. Malone struck out back in the first. He homered last night against Cincinnati. Alex McGarry is next. Adley Rutschman is a couple hitters away. That one fouled back to the screen. And it's one and two. When this regional and this bracket was released, a lot of people, Baseball America, ESPN.com, a lot of people looked at this and said this is one of the most competitive and toughest regionals because of how Creighton was playing, winning the Big East regular season and tournament, winning 13 of 14 to get here. Michigan, second place team in the Big Ten. And then Cincinnati, the wild card, who raced through the AAC tournament and won that. Johnson gets another ground ball out. Malone out number two. For more coverage of the Division I baseball tournament and the interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com. I always find the matchup intriguing when you when you have power teams like a Creighton versus, you know, pitching heavy teams. I think that's what you get a lot here, too. You know, you've, you've got that in this game, certainly. Cincinnati is a team that likes to run a lot against Michigan, who's very similar. Those just make for competitive games up and down. And that's, I think, one when you look at Oregon on paper, as Rutschman waits on deck. That's probably the biggest component missing is the thump. And you measure that the quick look is home runs, but you really measure it in slugging percentage. And their slugging percentage is down almost 100 points from last year.
McGarry fouls it off his foot. I mean, last year, obviously, Rutschman was a big part of it. They, Oregon State wasn't losing many 3 2, 2 1, 4 2 games. They were putting runs on the board. They were putting a, a, a draft, I mean, a, an incredible amount of runs on the board yeah. last year. Over 500 runs last year, this year, around 320 runs. Just about the same amount of games, maybe a few more last year. Johnson bounces that one. Two outs here. Beavers trying to they get a runner on and get Adley Rutschman up there. This is a second time through the order for Evan Johnson. And he's been outstanding. Two strikeouts, a walk. And McGarry has the only hit. It was a single. High pop. Vilchis fighting the sun. Steps over his mask and makes the catch. And another nice inning for Evan Johnson and the Blue Jays. NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. The Oregon coastline is incredibly beautiful. Don't surf without a wetsuit. That's true. It's, it's also incredibly cold. Okay, we talked about Oregon State not having the thump, but their pitching has been terrific. Second in Division I. The bullpen's ERA is actually 1-7-0 coming in. And that's how they've been able to win games this year and finish as well as they did in the Pac-12. No, and that's what we haven't seen yet in the last two games. You saw that eight earned runs and 12 innings pitched. Pitching and defense normally the strength of this team. Letting them down a little bit. Will Hannafan with the bunt, Mendezona, and on a tag, he's out. That's nifty work by Zach Taylor. Let's check in to the studios and Chris Cotter. Chris? Thank you, Chris. We are in Corvallis. The Creighton Blue Jays have a 3-0 lead, and yes, this is an elimination game. Isaac Collins got a hanging breaking ball and lost it. Nice job by Zach Taylor to get that tag down. Not only that, the barehanded play at third base by Mendezona. They have it in them. Grant Gambrell threw 29 pitches in the third inning. You can see the pitch count right now sits at 62 here in the fourth. Oregon State's bullpen right now empty. And Collins swings and misses. So Rich, you get a good look here, and you can see that you know a lot of shifting yesterday. Oregon State, Zach Taylor, who just can't quite, he's all in the line, but you see Bo Phillip right behind the bag. Now I talked to Andy Jenkins about that, about why not just put him all the way over. If your second baseman goes, I think he should go. Into the bat, little floater in a right center field, and it is caught! Diving catch, Kyler McMahon. Kyler's had a little trouble the last two games with his jumps. You can even see his route. There's a little bit of a C in it, but he gets there and makes that play. Again, you're talking about someone who's still first year learning how to play center field. Terrific play. Pitcher loves it. Parker Upton. But to finish that thought, so and you'll see some shifting. We'll see it more today. It was interesting to me that Andy Jenkins said, we give Bo the freedom. If he goes to the other side, he can. But they let him kind of go back and forth, depending on how and what he sees. And I was surprised by that. I said, you don't just do it by the numbers. And he goes, well, think about last year. We had Madrigal, right? You don't just 
tell Magical where to go because he, he's got those instincts. Same with Grenier. They try to teach their kids here how to play the game and feel it. Check swing and a nice short inning for Grant Gambrell. Major League Baseball drafts. Adley Rutschman, many people feel, will be the number one overall pick. Swings at a first pitch fastball, hits it in the air to left. Parker Upton races in, and he makes the catch. And Rutschman is 0 for 2 in this game. Creighton is up 3 0. Now, Monday's draft of the projected top 20. Keith Law does such a good job here for ESPN, ESPN.com. Look at the number of top 20 picks that are playing in the NCAA tournament. Phenomenal. Now you see a lot of Rutschman, you see a lot of Vaughn. Kevin Stocker does a, a lot of Pac-12 games. Hunter Bishop, a guy that you've seen. Mm. You know, that's at Arizona State. He's not the only guy down there. I mean, they have a couple of guys, and Hunter Bishop is one of them. Plays hard, tremendous pop. Ready to hit at that level. You were a second round draft pick? I was, yes, back in 1991. Now, second round pick. that didn't come with as much of the the notoriety. Money? Or, <laughs> yeah, so I was going to say notoriety, okay. but, but money is, is, is there. But also the, the glare, the spotlight of the draft now is much bigger and much brighter. How did you handle the expectations in the days leading up to the draft, which obviously has to... You know, somewhat, I know he said it, it's out of his hands, but in the back of his mind, he's got to be thinking about that. Yeah, and it can be tough. And I think the biggest thing is to try not to avoid it. And that was something I actually learned even later in baseball when you start, if you're in a slump. For example, these guys come up to bat and see a foul ball down the line. They look up there, they see their batting average. Well, the draft's the same thing. The noise, Adley referred to it as the noise. If you try to avoid it, you're wasting energy. So, guy wants to talk to you, team wants to talk to you, you meet with them, you talk to them. And Adley's very well spoken. That's what I did. Now, the other trick here for Adley Rutschman, he's still in school. They're still trying to finish their school. They have finals and class and all of that as well. So he's dealing with a lot of stuff. So you rely on your coaching staff and your family. All those things come into play. So you, so you mean when Harold Reynolds was here last week, he wasn't here to help him with his with His, his finance finals. major. <laughs> yes, his major is finance. But that's, um, that's all part of it. Paul Molitor, I just remember saying, people talked about how do you not scoreboard watch when you're in the big leagues or when you're slumping and you see your picture and your batting average up there all the time. Paul Molitor just said, look, you can't avoid it, so why waste energy trying to do it? You just see it, you accept it, and you talk about it if somebody asks you, and then you move on and you play. It's similar to this. There's no way Adley's going to be able to avoid the attention and everything that comes with it, and he's handling it like a, a very mature young man. Right now, Evan Johnson, who has retired eight straight Oregon State Beavers. And full count to Bo Phillip, who has the power to knock one out of here. Johnson's fastball has kept Oregon State off balance. And it's, you know... It's not necessarily pure velocity, but, and I don't have a track man here, so I don't know what his spin rate is, but it looks like it's pretty good with that fastball because he's able to get strikes up in the zone. Oof, that one just missed. Yeah, and, and you see the misses. The misses that you're seeing from Johnson compared to the misses from Gamble, it's big, right? It's, it's just missing low, just missing off. A little bit up in the zone, and he's getting a different result because of it. You know, Zach Taylor hit the ball hard back in the first, which is a great sign. He had the big hit last night after a season-long slump. He smoked one out to short, and that finished the first. This is his second at bat. You can see the numbers. Even Paul Molitor would maybe blanch at that. That's a strike. No, and that's, that's a great example when you see the numbers go up there. And they throw up here. They don't have them up in the ballpark intentionally, but a lot of the ballparks do have that. So you go up every time and you see, oh, I'm hitting 129. And instantly you're mentally destroyed. 
learning how to get that out, just accept what it is. I've heard hitting coaches and major league hitters talk about rather than look at the season or look at the total number, look at what you've done over the last week. Look at what you've done over the last two games. And for a guy like Taylor, you have to look at what you've done over the last 24 hours. He had a huge hit last night in a big, big moment. And then he had a really nice at bat in the first inning. And he rifles one down the left field line. Parker upped it into the corner. Boy, you got to feel good for Zach Taylor. In with a double, a head first slide at second base. That's what you think about Kevin Stalker. You think about the last three or four at bats. <laughs> he hurt you. You know, some of the best advice that I ever got in the big leagues was this. And that was if you come out every day, if you're going to be a 200 hitter, in this case, Zach Taylor is under 200. If you're going to be a buck 29 hitter, you have to be the best buck 29 hitter that day on the field, whatever it might be, a walk, a double, a hit, a pick. If you're going to be a 400 hitter like Adley Rutschman, be the best 400 hitter that day. That attitude, which I know they've been working on with Zach Taylor, will get production out of him, and he will have so much more fun. His first double of the season, and Oregon State set up nicely here with one out. Mendezona, the left-handed bat, and runners second and third. Breaking ball misses up. Mendezona, fly ball out to left field. Creighton was shut out yesterday, but has three runs in an elimination game against the defending national champs. Oregon State came from behind last night to take the lead against the heavy underdog Cincinnati, but lost the game in the ninth inning. And, and I think you look here with Mendezona, and, and he's going to get a quick visit here from Ed Service. But this is where I think as a hitter, you have to look out there. It'd be great to get a double, a trip, something big, but they have to get a run. And that to me is a ground ball up the middle, something, something, whatever they're going to give you, take the run and pick away at it. Ed Service. That quick visit. Counts 2 and 0. Oh. Well, Evan Johnson has done the heavy lifting in this one. Adley Rutschman is 0 for 2. He struck him out and got him to a, a fly ball to medium left field. But right now, Oregon State with their best opportunity. I know that Andy Armstrong on deck is not an imposing hitter, if you look at him, but he has been hot as a pistol the last two or three weeks. Much more aggressive at the plate. There's a strike, and it's three and one. There's no question about Evan Johnson and his stuff. Opposing hitters this year hit below 200. High strikeout totals. Just 52 hits in 72 innings. Lost them. And they're loaded. Elimination game, both head coaches certainly with a, a quick trigger if a starter gets in trouble. Oregon State has stuck by their man, Grant Gambrell. He rewarded them with a 1-2-3 fourth after giving up three runs in the third. And now Ed Service watching Evan Johnson for the first time really struggle here. Armstrong's 0 for 1, three hits last night. And it's 1-0. and And Creighton's bullpen is about to stir. There's... Three Blue Jays hustling down there right now. As a hitter here, Andy Armstrong has to try to locate something a little bit up in the zone. Belt high or even a little higher. 
Sutton to get the ball in the air into the outfield. Denson Hull, who many thought would start the game for Creighton today, is the Blue Jay that's just starting to loosen up down in the bullpen. He's down there, not throwing yet, just stretching and, and trying to do it as fast as he can. 2-0 to Armstrong. And Evan Johnson, whatever he had, he can't find it right now. Oh. And there he is. Lefty is up and throwing now. Definitely a take sign here. It wouldn't surprise me. I'm a little surprised that they don't have somebody going out and doing a visit just to kind of kill some time. Give us give Hole a little bit more time to get loose. That's a strike. Yeah, yeah. That's, well, that's a big strike. Right down the middle. Now, if you're Andy Armstrong here, the old Andy Armstrong beginning of the year would be taken here all the way. But they've been talking to him lately. He's not a good two-strike hitter. You've got to box this up, look fastball. If it's a good pitch in your zone, be aggressive. Let it go. 3-1 pitch. Went after it and pops it up behind first. Holton is back. That's trouble. And it's caught there. Collins goes down, fires it home. A run's going to score. The Blue Jays get an out, but they may have an injury or two. Two players are down. Collins made a terrific catch in traffic with contact and was able to get the throw home. It's going to go as a sacrifice, and Oregon State is on the board. The other two runners did not move up. Ooh. Oh, boy, it looked like they conked knees there. What a terrific play just to hang on to the ball by the second baseman here. That's Will Rob Robertson, yeah. the oh. right fielder. He got popped up in the Was head. head. Yeah, it looked that way. Remember now, he's already been hitting the leg to get on. He got smoked in the back of the neck on a pickoff play. Oof. Robertson took the brunt of that. Yeah. Collins hopped right up and got off a strong throw. Now, I know they're still working with Wood on the other side. Great job tagging at third base. I'm not quite sure why Zach Taylor's not tagging at second. They're, they're got to be a little bit close, closer to the bag to be able to advance. Collins did get up and make a pretty good throw in and quick throw. As a base runner hmm. at second base, I'll play devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. You're not sure that ball's going to be fair or foul. It's tough to tell from that point. And at that depth, are you, you know, three a quarter of the way off? Or are you tagging up? What's the, the mindset? Well, with, with, in that case, you've got an out, right? So you try to read it, and you've got plenty of time to hover and hover and hover and see if they're going to get there. What I would do is you gotta you got to judge that distance if you can get back and tag. You get a look at it here. There is one out. So typically you, you tag with no outs and not with one. You go halfway. And they're hovering a little bit. Now, I lost sight of him, and we don't see him in this replay. My yeah. guess is is that me, he may have thought that was going to drop and wasn't tagging to begin with. Well, no, but there's, there's a ton of time. Like, you've got yes. time to decide. Agreed. That's the key, right? I, I think you have to get to that point where maybe you're 10 feet off. It's possible that he was way off, like halfway, thinking he was going to score. But if that ball drops between three guys and it's fair, you're not going to really score even if you're halfway. Right. It's a tough read. But it's an important 90 feet that Oregon State did not get. The one thing is I'm sure going through his mind is he's, he's like, hey, look, I, I'm not making that third out at third base. I'm not going to be that guy. And so at least now they still have with Casey up the runner in scoring position. Let's head to the studio quickly and Chris Cotter. Chris? All right, thank you, Chris. A run finally for Oregon State and a big at bat for Joe Casey. Strike one from Evan Johnson. Terrific play by Isaac Collins, the Blue Jays' second baseman, not only to get the out, 
but to hop up and throw home and keep the other two runners at first and second. In the air, shallow right. Collins is called off, and it's Robertson. This time, no collision. 3 1 Creighton. Game two, NBA Finals on ABC and the ESPN app. Raptors up one game, none. Coverage starts. NBA countdown, 7 30 Eastern, 4 30 Pacific. Fifth time the Warriors have trailed in a playoff series under Steve Kerr. They have won the previous four. Here in Corvallis, the Corvallis Regional, Oregon State lost an amazing game last night to Cincinnati. Elimination game here. And the number 16 overall seed in the tournament and the one seed here in this regional. On the ropes right now, down 3-1, facing elimination. Jake Holton, one of the power bats for Creighton. Takes a bouncer. For ball two, Holton, Will Robertson, Jack Strunz against Grant Gambrell, one of the top starters for Oregon State. Had a rough third inning, gave up a home run, gave up three runs. And that's a big cut by Holton. He was thinking fastball. It was actually a pretty good little off-speed pitch, but, you know, he's not going to be able to live against Holton and Robertson in the middle of the lineup by getting behind in the count. Same pitch. Just a little change up that he's working there. Colton singled in the third. Boy, righty on righty change up, and he tripled up on it. Let's check in with Chris Cotter. Chris? Chris, we are happy to report that the weather here in Corvallis is spectacular and it's supposed to get even better tomorrow, which I don't know how you do it, but it has been low 80s, no clouds, light breeze. You know, at times it gets a little bright, you know, for us. Oh. You know, but, you know, we'll take it. Well, that's why you've got eye black and, and your <laughs> flip down sunglasses that's in the right. booth. That's right. Always. The old school. Robertson up. Robertson has been banged around in this ball game. He's had it. He's just in that collision down the first baseline, was hit by a pitch. He's been on base twice. So if you think about it, too, as, as he walks here, four pitches. He gets hurt at first on the pickoff. Next pitch has to score. Then he gets hurt in the outfield. Next pitch makes a terrific run in full speed play. Quick recovery, I tell you. Tough kid. Well, before he got hit at first, he got hit at the plate, right? Yeah, he got hit, hit by the leg. Pitch. Strunts now had the, the big hit, the RBI single, and on that play, an error by Kyler McMahon in center. Allowed a second run to score. That followed the Isaac Collins home run for Creighton in the third. And that pop-up is going to find foul territory. I spoke with Jack before the game today because, you know, Jack played at Washington State University here in the Pac-12 his freshman year and played on this field. And I said, well, how do you like the field now? And he said, you know, I loved it back then when it was new. Now that the turf's worn down a little bit, he said it's a lot faster than he remembers which is still somewhat slow compared to other fields. But he's been here many times in the past. Is it fair to say the newer the field turf, the slower it's going to be? Some, you know, you, you have to maintain the modern field turf field yep. with the whatever pellets or whatever base you've got in the strands of plastic. And oftentimes if you drag it, much like dragging an infield, you can fluff it up again. That is a hit batter. 
Strunz is hit. He turned away from it. Of course, the, the wrinkle in the rule this year is you cannot dip your shoulder or turn towards it. Let's see. You can turn away from it, and I think that's what he did. Yeah, and I think that's fair, and that ball barely hit that pad. I mean, it just, just nicked it. See, this is this is where I think Nate Yeski and Oregon State has to be really careful with how far they're going to stick with Gambrell. And here you go. So Yeski's going to come out and have a little conversation here, and this might be some time for the pen. I just... Gambrell's okay on a couple, but then he loses it real quick. I just don't think you can take that chance. Get into your strength, and that's your pen. Yeski right now is uh, adding a, a few comments on his way to the mound to Derek Mollica, the home plate umpire. Big component of Oregon State's success lies with Yeski and his abilities and to develop pitching. He's developed a lot of pitching that has been drafted and gone on to play in the big leagues and the high minors. Malik is going to come on out and speed this meeting along. There's nobody throwing right now in Oregon State's bullpen. It's funny with this with this ballpark and as nice as it is, you'd think they could figure out a way to get a bench down there for those guys. <laughs> well, this conversation is continuing. This is a long, long visit. Now, wait a minute. There is nobody throwing right now, but apparently someone had thrown and was ready. And we saw him run down there about an inning ago. That was Dylan Pierce. So Pierce wasn't in the bullpen. He was waiting in the wings, and he arrives in the fifth. NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. That shot is for Chris Cotter just to show you that the weather is still fantastic <laughs> here in Oregon. That's the Willamette River 3-1 Creighton on top. Pitching change for the defending national champs, Oregon State. Dylan Pierce, 91-92 fastball, decent secondary stuff. And we, we always refer to him as small but mighty. In fact, when you talk to Nate Yeski, his exact words, if I can say this, says he's a competitive little stinker. And there you go, right? I mean, that's from Nate Yeski. But he is. He's a guy you can see him there as he motivates himself. He gets after it. He'll pump himself up. You'll see him be quite active around the mound. That certainly sounds like something that would appear under the intangibles on a scouts report. Hovey now with runners first and second and one out. And Pierce throws strike one. The Blue Jays, the Big East champions, shut out by Michigan yesterday. Carl Kaufman, terrific start for the Wolverines. Got three runs against Oregon State in the third. Beavers got a run in the bottom of the fourth. Blue Jays threatening here. Rutschman tried to, to freeze it and frame it on the outside, but it's out and it's one and one. You go back a little bit to that visit by Yeski, who was really jumping at the home plate upper. I think he was really upset about the hit by pitch. I think he feels Strunt stepped in enough to get a call on that. Explain to the viewers the college rule as far as hit by pitch. There's a few little wrinkles that don't appear in Major League Baseball. Well, the one thing is you're always taught as a player to turn your back and get hit. Now when you turn your back, and if at all it looks like you lean over a little bit, they will, instead of giving you a hit by pitch in your base, they actually call it a strike, even if it wasn't even close to the strike zone. It's a point of emphasis. So what that means is they always have one or two. Well, when it's a point of emphasis like this year, they, they call it more than they did in the past, right? So now you're seeing a lot of strikes called on hitters when they shouldn't be. But I'll be honest with you, over the last couple of years, I've seen a lot of college hitters like to lean over. They wear, Everybody wears the elbow pad now, so they get the elbow out. 3-1. Lifted out of play. Dylan Pierce in. 
Jordan Hovey, Creighton's third baseman. Probably not that upset they made a pitching change. He struck out twice against Grant Gambrell. Robertson at second, Strunz at first. 3-2, sprayed towards short. Now Phillip was behind the bag at second, so he's got to go to first to get the out. Runners move up 90 apiece, but there's two outs. Really nice play here by Bo, a victim of the shift a little bit here as he is playing behind second. He's not all the way on the other side. But he has to go to his backhand side. Look how he comes through it. I know he throws on the run like that, but he takes that extra time to work through the baseball to make that play. Heads up. David Vilches, Creighton's catcher. You know, we never shifted. I mean, I'm, I know you played shortstop in your days. Back in the day, we never had the shift. The only guy that we would try it on would be Barry Bonds, and he always went over the shift. So as a shortstop, I never had to deal with that. I've always felt when the team shifts like that, one of the toughest things defensively are your, your relay throws, cutoffs, relays, where to be, and then your angles are so different off the bait, off the bat. There's so much anticipation from an infielder on going left or right. When you shift from one side to the other, you lose some of that ability. Into the bat and down the line and foul. Well, that play in particular, you, you talk about angles, it disrupts the ability to turn a double play. If you have a shortstop that's behind second and is drawn to his right, there's no way he can get the ball to second by himself. And the second baseman is so far over on the shift, he can't get there. So the, your only play is first base. Yeah, you're really giving up. And that's the thing about double plays, though. I've, you're going to give up something in order to get something. In the past, you always gave up the holes a little bit in order to get two outs on the price of one ground ball. As you shift, you give up a little bit more, but you're still, you know, you still play the odds. You play what you see on the pitch count, on the pitch charts. Rutschman tried to hold it, but no call. And it's one and two. just steps out. Pierce to the one, two. And the count evens now at two and two. See Ed Service in the shot there, the head coach. He also coaches third base. Line drive right at third, and Mendezona squeezes it. Still a 3-1 game. Ed Service joins us when we return. In a tough road environment, Ed Service and Creighton has a 3-1 lead. The head coach of the Blue Jays joins us now. We've been complimenting your third base coach today. That was an aggressive send and a good one in the third inning. Well done. Well, when you play a quality team like this, you don't get a lot of scoring opportunities. And you got to go in with the mindset you're going to be aggressive. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to continue to play that way here, here the second half of this game. You know, Ed, I got to ask you, so Will Robinson, I'm, I'm going to compare him to like a rugby player because he's been hit in the leg. He was hit at first, made a pretty good play coming in from right field, got pounded in the head. Tell us a little bit about his mentality. Well, he's a tough kid. He's a physical kid, as you can see. He does look like he could play, uh, you know, football outside linebacker. That's who you recruit now, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we do. And um, 
Uh, Will's been nicked up a little bit throughout the year, but, you know, he doesn't come out. He gets a little attention, and he gets back in there. So, obviously, we need him. He's one of our best players. Ed, your approach to Adley Rutschman, our different coaches have said, oh, we're not going to let him beat us. You guys have gone after him and had success. Well, we've had a chance with nobody on base either. So, I mean, the, the likelihood things would change if there gets guys in scoring position or if there gets runners in base or if he's the time run and things like that. But I think, I think our pitchers want to pitch against the best. And he's the best out there, so uh, these guys are anxious to see if they can get him out. I was talking to you, some of your assistant coaches today, and yesterday's game, offensively, looked a little passive at the plate, a little different today. Yeah, we, that wasn't the real Creighton team yesterday, and really all facets. You know, we didn't pitch as well as we normally do, and we just were missing a beat. Um, you know, that's to happen in baseball once in a while. You just don't want it to happen at this time of year. So I fully anticipated these guys would play well today, and they are. All right, last question. How much is your, your right-hander, Evan Johnson, who's pitched so well today, how much does he have left in the tank? Not much, but we've got to get three or four or five more outs out of him, and then I feel good about our bullpen. We're just trying to figure out who the best left-handed option is out of our bullpen because obviously Oregon State runs a lot of left-hand hitters out there at you, so we need a few more outs out of Evan. Hopefully he settles down after last inning. Looks like he's doing pretty good so far this inning, and uh, we, need, we need some more outs out of him. Ed, thanks for the visit. Good luck the rest Thank of the you way. Guys. What a great baseball man from a great baseball family, Ed Service. You could, you could talk with him forever about just the college game, Major League Baseball, all of that. And his right-hander, Evan Johnson, is a couple of outs. And this is a huge inning because Rutschman do up fourth when the inning started. If he can get three outs before facing Rutschman, that's a, a huge win. For the senior out of Gilbert, Iowa, Evan Johnson. Ed's great, isn't he? I mean, you, you could ask him like a, a two-word question and then just sit back. Now, you know the name if you follow Major League Baseball. His nephew is Scott, and as we told you yesterday, he's more of a brother because they're close in age. He came, uh, Ed comes from a huge baseball family. He's got seven brothers. And a lot of baseball involved with the, just about everybody in the service family. Scott and his nephew was an All-American at Creighton. Was a great catcher. Alex McGarry in that two spot, one for two. Adley Rutschman, who is 0 for two, is on deck. You know, with Adley, too, because he is a switch hitter, I think for Ed Service and his pitching staff, you start to think about that third time, fourth time through the lineup, things like that. When's a good time to switch him to the other side of the plate? That's a tactic you can use with guys that are really good hitters, especially if they're switch hitters. Try to get something, something to change their view, whatever that might be. I think he'd love to get McGarry to get to the next inning and possibly at that point switch him around. Roller up the middle to his left. And it's in to center field. Strunz got a piece of it. And now, as Ed Service said, they've been able to face Rutschman with nobody on base. Now that's not a possibility. Now you got a runner at first base. It's a two-run game. And here comes the probable number one draft pick in Monday night's Major League Draft. Well, you certainly, I don't think can give in to Rutschman here. I think you have to be very careful. They certainly, I don't think, are going to intentionally walk him like we saw. But to give him something to hit down the heart of the plate would be a big mistake in this situation. He went after the first pitch in the fourth and hit a fly ball to medium left. Johnson struck him out back in the first. Breaking ball for a strike. Outfield deep. Not a bad place to miss. He's sitting at 80 pitches, still throwing 90 miles an hour. I mean, that's really good for him. He's not a big guy. He should stay off the plate just a little bit. And I think, Adley, that first pitch was taken all the way. He's trying to get himself into a good hitter's count. 
Remember that first at bat. He got the first two strikes by jamming him. And then got the strikeout by going away. That one misses. You get a good indication, too. If you watch Vilches, his catcher, behind the plate, he's really quiet with how he moves, but he sets his glove. You'll get a good look. I think they're just trying to stay away from him, just off the plate, try to get him to chase. Looks like they're going to head back inside on him. To get me over breaking ball got strike one. He's missed with three straight. And they're just going to put him on, I believe. So, intentionally walked last night with the bags loaded. Intentionally walked with the runner at first. We intentionally walked to Chris Cotter with his check-in. Chris? All right, thank you, Chris. Here, Creighton trying to hold on to this 3-1 lead. Ed Service, the head coach at Creighton, trying to get at least another out out of his starter, Evan Johnson. Adley Rutschman, of a 3-1 count, was intentionally walked. He's at first. Alex McGarry at second. Shortstop, Bo Phillip, the hitter. Ball and a strike. You know, Bo hitting behind Rutschman is going to have chances. He had a couple last night. He just couldn't get that rhythm at the plate. A couple walks today, but when you hit behind Rutschman in this spot, which is what Oregon State's, that's their option right now as far as protection for him. Got to get a pitch to hit. It's time for him to come through. I know there's a little pressure on him. Outfield deep. Phillip has five home runs. In the air to right field. Fairly deep. Robertson leaps and he makes the catch. Will Robertson, who has been knocked around and kicked and pummeled and hit to the wall, and he got it, and it's still 3-1. Oregon State head coach Pat Bailey joins us now. Look, it's hard. Last night we saw Adley walked intentionally with the bases loaded. You could see that uh, Creighton was pitching carefully and then essentially pitched around him in the fifth. The discipline that he's shown all year has been incredible just to put the numbers up that he has. Yeah, I, I mean, we talked about it at the beginning of the year that we knew he was going to get thrown around quite a bit and then he just had to have uh, strike zone discipline at the plate and when he got his pitches to hit, he, he, needed to, he couldn't mess them. You know, so Pat, he's, he's had a great year for us. Oh, he's unbelievable. And I, you know, talking with you today, too, just in regards to the team yesterday, I love the analogy you gave me about, hey, this team played so tight, like they were almost in a prison. You got to get them back to playground playing a little bit. Absolutely. Is, I mean, are they doing that better today? Are you still seeing some of that? Uh, I think they're doing a better job of it today. I mean, that, that one half inning was not a good inning for us, and they scored three runs. But besides that, I think it's been pretty clean baseball. Uh, managing an elimination game like this, it's all hands on deck. I would expect e even guys, starting pitchers, relievers, everybody is on alert. Absolutely. If you don't win this one, you're done. Yep. Check swing. Ball in the dirt. Rutschman fires the first and makes the play. Pat, good luck the rest of the way. Thanks, buddy. It's great talking to you. All right. Thanks for the visit. Pat yeah, Bailey. Nelly Rutschman with a good throw to first. We told you last year in elimination games, the Beavers were 6-0. and And not only 6-0, and but they outscored their opponents 52-18. to Alberry strikes out. Will Hannafan for Creighton. Fouls it at the plate. Fastball up and in. Whoever emerges from this game or survives this elimination game. The biggest challenge is pitching depth from here on out. 
Because if you're going to get to the Super Regional, you essentially have to win today and then two games tomorrow and then a game on Monday. That third inning for Creighton started with Isaac Collins. Leadoff hitter with some pop. Now he's also made a couple of terrific plays defensively, but I think this one really loosened up that Creighton bench. You see him down there all excited. And he's a leader of this team. There's no question about it. Maple Grove, Minnesota. Fits the profile that uh, Ed Service is looking for these days. High school football player, shortstop in high school. And really took off in the Cape Cod League this past offseason. Man, that one's up and in. That's the thing, you know, sometimes you look at what a player did last year as opposed to this year. And what you don't figure in is the improvement or the performance that that player was able to put in in one of the college summer leagues. Whether it's the, the North League, Northwoods League, the Cape Cod League. There are so many really good summer leagues for college players that... You know, guys who don't get a lot of at-bats as a freshman or sophomore will go and play a full summer and come back and step on campus a much improved or different player than when he left campus. Collins hits that ball to left center field, hits it pretty well. Casey's after it, won't get it, hops up against the wall. Good speed with Isaac Collins, racing around second, headed for third, high throw. He's in there with a triple. Seventh triple this year. He led the Big East in triples. Isaac Collins again off the leadoff spot. Now watch. One thing about him that is great. He knows the play is all in front of him. There's no looking at his coach. This is all on him. It's his decision. And it's the right decision. Parker Upton now. Two outs. An add-on run is 90 feet away. And Pierce with a change-up misses outside. On one hand, one of the old baseball rules, you don't want to make that last out of the inning at third base. But on the other hand, you get that 90 feet. Now there's pressure on Pierce and on Rutschman. You still want these kids, and Ed service is huge. He wants the kids to play with feel, feel the game. Now he understands the rules. And you know what? Big bottom line guy. If you make it, fine. If you don't, we'll have a discussion in the dugout, right? Kind of what you're talking about. But these guys are, you know, that's how they play. They're aggressive. He likes them to think for themselves. That's how Cincinnati played last night. Yeah. In, in taking, and if they don't play that way, they don't take down Oregon State last night. They played the game to win last night. Yeah. I think that was evident with that intentional walk. Bases loaded. It would have been easy to sit on that. Upton swings and misses. And it's two and two. And both coaches will tell you when you think about, even at the big league level, but especially here too, it's practice time is the coach's time. But once the game starts, that's the players' time. You let the players play. And if they're doing something wrong, you deal with that in practice. Dylan Pierce. Little looper. Center field. McMahon is there, and he makes the catch. Creighton leaves a runner at third. Bottom of the six coming up. 3-1 Blue Jays. Oh, Oregon. Pay attention, Chris Cotter. Weather's still great here. And beach volleyball at Oregon State. They got it all going on here in what is a terrific college town. They love their baseball team, and they should. One of the best programs in the nation is right here in Corvallis, defending national champs. 
but on the ropes in an elimination game. Upset last night by Cincinnati. Trailing Creighton here. Zach Taylor takes a breaking ball. For ball one, it's one and oh. Remember Ed Service told us he wanted to three, four, maybe five more outs from Evan Johnson. Johnson got a big out and some help on the catch by Robertson. Creighton's bullpen is ready. Beavers stranded two in the fifth. Taylor, Mendezona, and Armstrong here. Five, six, seven in the Oregon State order. Taylor's had two really nice at bats. Hit a hot smash to short. That was an out in the first, and then ripped a double down the left field line. And then adds on to his big two run hit last night to tie the game late. It would be easy here for Johnson to give in and just start to throw pitches down the middle. He's getting a little tired. His pitch count's running up almost at 90. But I respect the fact that he's not. He's still competing on the corners, trying to make good pitches. Lead off walk, and now the question is how long do you stay with him? How much more can you get out of him? 90 pitches. I would think that'd be really close. I, especially with Mendezona coming up. It's not like he has a left-hander though up in the pen. John, John Sikowski is that right-hander. Mendezona shows bunt and does. First base side. Interesting. You know, I, I'm not sure that I agree with this play, but this is Pat Bailey here where his offense, especially in the bottom of the lineup, has really struggled. So he's just going to try to get that one run and pick away at it with four innings to go for his offense. I struggle with that. Mendezona, left-handed hitter at that case with a runner on first. There's a big open hole over there. Maybe give him a shot to try to hook it. So that answers the question. Into the road for Evan Johnson. Terrific work for the right-hander. NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. Corvallis Regional. Great time to be in Oregon. Now... This is an elimination game. Later on tonight, we've got Michigan and Cincinnati. That should be a fun ball game. We saw, of course, a whale of a game last night. Cincinnati upsetting the defending national champs, Oregon State. Michigan shut out Creighton. Runner at second base. And a spin there by John Sikowski, the right-hander, who takes over for Evan Johnson. Andy Armstrong is the hitter in the seventh spot, the Oregon State order. Down two and a sacrifice bunt after getting the leadoff man on. That speaks to the state of Oregon State's offense right now. They're having trouble putting together any kind of rally, stringing together any bunch of hits. That's to left. Upton makes the catch, and now you've got two outs. Now, Sikowski, and you can see his delivery point, kind of a, a three-quarter, almost a low three-quarter delivery. And talking to Ed Service about his relief core and how he uses his bullpen, he said one of the things they try to do at Creighton, because you don't get a lot of guys that throw in the 90s, is have guys with varying delivery points, various release points, and give a team different looks. So when you're bringing guys out of the bullpen, you're not bringing the same type of guy out of the bullpen, whether it's a sidearm or a three-quarter or a lefty. 
It's very different. To give you an idea with Sikowski and talking with their pitching coach. To left and deep. Upton back. Leaps and has it against the wall. Second straight inning with a leaping catch by a Blue Jay. This time, Parker Upton up and has it. Creighton clinging to a 3-1 lead right now into the seventh inning. Great outfield play in both corner spots to finish the fifth and the sixth for the Blue Jays. Jake Holton at the plate, and he takes a strike. Dylan Pierce continues on the mound for Oregon State. Holton, the Big East Player of the Year, one for three here. A single and a pair of strikeouts. And it's 0-2. Holton has been seeing either fastballs in or change-ups late in the count. In fact, his last at-bat, he had struck out on three back-to-back to back change-ups. Boy, he got away with a the pitch there. That was <laughs> that ball was up right out over the plate. Let's do that. Oh, two. Baseball is so different from other team sports, especially in the postseason, and you've talked about it. A guy like Holton is a Big East player of the year. He's one of the thumpers for Creighton. But you can't go out and force yourself on a game. In baseball, you have to let the game come to you. You have to take what's given. Rutschman's a great example of it. I mean, Rutschman's the stud, obviously, for Oregon State. And you're thinking, wow, he's going to come out and pop a few out for them to win. Not if he doesn't get anything to hit. Right. Right? Right. right. And, and it's hard to come out and really say, I'm going to take over this game as a hitter. That's not how it works. Right. Two balls, two strikes. Little chopper. And Pierce off the bound, fires to first. So an out here in the seventh. Robertson battered and bruised. Intentional walk, hit by a pitch. Walked again. Kicked in the head at first. In a collision in right, which knocked off his, his cap and his glasses and put him down on the turf for a, a good minute. Inside out swan, and it floats fair down the left field line. Big man can run, too, and he's got himself a double. Will Robertson, the junior out of Loose Creek, Missouri. You know, I think Ed kind of said it best when we were interviewing him. We asked him about Will, how he's doing. And I don't know if you caught it, but he said, yeah, you know, he was down, just needed a little attention, and then he's good to go. Right? <laughs> Everybody once in a while, Rich, needs just a little attention. Amen. You know, you're talking about letting the game come to you and not force it. I think that's just a great point because it's easy to force things in big games like this. And the only way to, to deal with that is to trust your routine. I think you have to have a routine. And Cincinnati last night talks about their process. It's the same with a hitter or a pitcher or an infielder. And so you have that daily routine that you, that's why you have it. After a while, you can get sick of the routine, the daily, the daily grind of it. But that routine typically gets you in check, ready to go by game time so that you're your normal self. That's the idea.
way out in front of the breaking ball is Jack Strunz. His at bat is the biggest at bat of the ball game, and that was in the third inning. That line drive that just got over the glove of Beaver shortstop Bo Phillip knocked in a run. It was mishandled in center by McMahon, and Ed Service never hesitated. He had the runner from first going all the way, and two runs came across, and that gave Creighton a three nothing lead. Trent hits that one, shallow left. Casey was deep, charging in, and he dives and he's not going to get it. It pops up, throw behind the runner at third. Robertson is back in. We have talked about Oregon State and how deep they play their outfield, especially Casey in left field. And not only is it is quite deep, he's playing into the gap a little bit. That's part of it here. You can see him in the left of your screen. See how far over in the gap he is? This ball just carries far enough. Bo tries to get out there. No chance for him. It's a tough break for Oregon State. And, of course, with one out, Robertson, and you could see him in the shot there. He was more than halfway to third base. Yeah. At the corner. And one out. Yeah, there is a little Creighton contingent here chanting Hovey. Jordan Hovey's 0 for 3. Middle infield back for 2. Shortening to bunt. Now, the first and third bunt play, it's popular in the big leagues with a few teams. Joe Madden loves it. And it's designed to just get a run. And if you put it in the right spot, you force the defense's hand, and the runner at third can trot home. Hobie takes a strike. But I think, too, part of it is understanding your hitter. Hobie's not a real runner, he, and, and grounding in a double play is something that he's done a lot. So you go, well, you know, right now you have a pitcher who's doing a pretty good job of keeping the ball down. Good defensive up the middle. Maybe you steal that run with that bunt in this situation. And remember, it's it's more of a sack bunt. He certainly wouldn't be bunting for a base hit. Strunz is the runner at first. Robertson is at third. Mendezona doesn't believe the, the bunt threat too much. He's even at the bag at third. And obviously, Zach Taylor at first has to hold the runner. And a move to third, it's thrown away. Here comes Robertson, throw to the plate. He's in there. And it's 4-1. I, I don't really understand why Oregon State feels they have to be tricky in this situation. It's possible maybe they thought there was a squeeze coming. So they did this play. Again, it's a play that you rarely perform. So then in a big moment like this, you're going to try to make this happen. It's just boxed over there by my Mendezoni. He just misses it. And, I mean, if you, if you, as a base runner, are sensing that something is up, the fact that Mendezona wasn't playing up closer, maybe that tipped off that there was something going on at third. Because if he's up, you can't run that play. Well, I, 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 don't, I don't think he tipped it. I just think if you're going to do that play, then as a pitcher, you got to sell it. Like, you got to look like you're, you know, if you're going to just lift your leg like that, there was no, I don't know the right word, but there was no trying to trick anybody. Deception. Deception. Thank you. That's why I think part of me thinks that, they, you know, you're going to just take off on first pitch. I just don't think it was the right time to do it, nor was it performed well. In the air and out of play. Because even, even if Mendezona like was to come in, he could go back to the bag a little bit. But, again, I'm, I'm not a big fan. Oregon State's good enough to try to trick teams like that. It just doesn't make sense to me. Well, Hovey's at bat now at, at one and two. It's a 4-1 lead right now for the Big East champs. He got him. So Pierce comes back to get Hovey. The right-handed hitting catcher, David Vilches, is now the hitter.
One of the frustrating things outside of losing the game last night, but the frustrating thing certainly for Oregon State fans and for Pat Bailey, their head coach, were the, the mistakes that were made last night, the physical errors and the mental errors. You win six elimination games like the Beavers did last year to win a national championship, six elimination games in the postseason. You don't make mistakes like that. No. And last night, part of that was the aggressiveness of Cincinnati and their style of play. Pitching coach for the Beavers, Nick Yeski on his way out. But that those mistakes have surfaced here. The, the bobble ball in center field on the two runs that scored on the single. See, I, I think this is, again, a, a, someone who played at the infield position, played for coaches that liked consistency. I think it's tough in the college game to have young players come in and play so many different positions and lineups throughout the year. Now, the college game has gone to that. There are usually one or two players that will bounce from second to the outfield and that sort of thing because you recruit a new kid in that might be better. But if it's through the season, you haven't found that consistency of the same guy in left, same in third. They have switched them all around. Those type of plays that we just saw are hard to execute correctly because you just don't have, you have a different third baseman, different first baseman, and so on. I think it puts a lot of pressure on the team to perform in those big moments. Here is Vilches. Struntz is still at second. After the Yeski visit, pitches foul back. And, and part of the, the interchangeable parts in this swapping positions for the Beavers has nothing to do with defense. It has everything to do with trying to find guys that are going well offensively because the Beavers have been so inconsistent offensively. You're trying to find the right guys and, and get somebody going, you have to switch guys and move yeah, guys around. Very fair. I'm saying that I will say if you're a high school kid out there and you're a shortstop and you're your star and you're being recruited, you have to come into these college programs nowadays with the attitude of you might become a third baseman. You might become a second. That might happen in your freshman year, that sort of thing. But again, juggling your lineup so much defensively, and I, I know why they're doing it. You make a great point. But mistakes will start to happen. High pop up on the infield. Phillip calling and Phillip catching. Creighton adds a run, leads it 4 1. Creighton has found their offense and they've needed their defense. A Capital One rewarding performance in right and in left. This was fifth inning. This was Will Robertson with runners on making the catch. And in the sixth with another runner on. A leaping grab by Parker Upton. Love it. Now that fence in left, by the way, with the extension above it. You have to hit it over that. That's a 15-foot wall in left, but an 8-foot wall in right. There's a look at the addition to the fence in left. You know, when you win national championships, you, you need an addition. So you can tell, tell everybody about it. Well, I like how you caught that. Didn't you? you needed somewhere to put the banner. <laughs> Which, you know, that didn't used to be there for years, but they kept hosting regionals. Right. And they needed to add bleachers and cover the bullpen, so they finally just decided to make it permanent. Zach Zaleski is the hitter as he pitch hits here for Oregon State. But when they've added seats here of late, aside from the luxury suites and, and the patios and all of that, they've added them in the outfield. There's a great look at this ballpark. One of the most unique ballparks you'll find in college baseball because it sits right in the middle of campus. Classrooms around it, dorms next to it. If you're walking to class, you'll walk right by the baseball stadium. So there's not a lot of room for this stadium to go up in the air. Hannafin is out there and makes the catch. 
The capacity here is about 3,500, and they fill it up. They are, are talking about adding more seats to the bleacher areas between the foul poles. Here's a look at Goss Stadium. That's the addition down the left field line. Jacoby Ellsbury chipped in for that. Then you've got the clubhouse underneath it and a, a nice patio. You know, and, and keep in mind out here, it, it's a smaller venue, but they fill it. And on the West Coast at times, there's so much to do. You have a lot of these programs have a hard time filling the ballparks. Not here. And it's intimate. The, the, the fans are close. Fun to watch a game here. Line drive, well hit. Malone got into a dive. Catch! Got it! Upton again! Pow! Let's look to make sure it's clean, but it sure looked like it. Ah, that's it's clean. a catch. That's a catch. I think they're going to review it, but man, you can start counting now, right? So, two great plays got Oregon State last night. Three more today. Terrific plays. Now that you have to try to overcome that, but goodness gracious! Yeah, Cincinnati made two great plays in the outfield in their upset win last night. We just showed you the two catches at the wall. Here's the the big difference between replay in college and replay in the major leagues. In the major leagues, you have the replay monitor set up in each clubhouse so that a coach can actually look at the replays and look at the play for about 30 to 45 seconds and tell the head coach, or the manager obviously in major leagues, but it would be the head coach here, hey, don't review it, it's a catch. Here, you're going just on what you see. There's, there's no video review by any team, so you're just going by what you see. We saw it as a clear catch but Oregon State didn't have a chance to look at that at all so I like the replay system in college I think that's a nice step forward that's the big difference is that you're going on what your players tell you if it's a tag play which is generally wrong in, in, in the big yeah. leagues the players are always going to say they're safe exactly you know, and that, and that person in the big leagues that does that, that's his job all game long. You actually keep a record for that guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, there's 10 and 2, whatever it might be. There's advanced metrics on that. McGarry fouls it back. To be honest with you, in the first couple of years of replay, there were some teams that just threw anybody back there. Like, you know, one of the, the coaches or one of the, somebody on staff. Sure. But all of a sudden, people realized how important that role was. And so now you need a combination of a... A strategist, because that that position has to decide whether to gamble on a call. Because sometimes you don't get the clear look, or sometimes it's hit or miss. Savvy baseball person, someone who is a decision-making type guy who can, you know, talk to a manager about let's do it, let's let's take a chance on it, and that's become a very vital role with every major league team. Rutschman's on deck. That one's cranked, but foul. You know, and on that note is, I, I only, only from experience like with the Phillies, it's not just what goes on in the game. Typically there, the video guy is responsible for all of the video. So like players come in and want to watch their swing, They're, that's what they do, right? But and to your point, he's a baseball savvy guy. Like he understands the game, what a catch is, what it isn't, all of that. I love it. Ooh. Sikowski with a live fastball that misses up and in. Count one and two. Beavers would love to get that man to the plate with a runner on. Well, now you can look back at that run, that last inning that Creighton got. Something happens now and Rutschman gets up there. Even if he does hit a two-run home run or something like that, you still have a lead. That's how big one run can be for a team like Creighton. Alex. 
Got him. Live fastball. The Creighton Blue Jays trying to stay alive. And Parker Upton having a day in left field. Chris, not always easy being number one in your region. Just ask Oregon State. Upset last night in a thriller by Cincinnati. And down 4-1 here to Creighton in the top of the eighth. Preston Jones in here in the top of the eighth inning. Jason Alberry for Creighton is up. And he takes a fastball that misses outside. Blue Jays have had three terrific defensive plays in the outfield. And they have found their offense. They were shut out by Michigan yesterday. They've put four runs on eight hits up, including a solo homer and a triple by Isaac Collins, their leadoff hitter. That ball down the right field line could be trouble. Malone giving chase, sliding and holding the catch, tumbling on the warning track. That's a nice play. You know, Tyler Malone coming into the season hadn't played any right field. I mean, this was a position that they asked him if he could do it, and he was never going to say no. He said, absolutely. Not only that, he covers a lot of ground. It's about time that Oregon State flashed some of their leather. It's been happening to them enough. Nice play. This is a better defensive team, certainly, than they've shown in the first two ball games. Oh, very much so. Will Hannafan takes a strike. And a fan is sophomore. Council Bluffs, Iowa. Inside out swing. Ends up in the seats. You got to know that Michigan and Cincinnati, who play tonight, are taking a keen interest in watching this. Michigan shut out Creighton six to nothing yesterday. And Oregon State upset by Cincinnati. I wonder what Kevin Euclid is going to tell the Bearcats before tonight's game. Another speech coming, huh? I would think so. That ball to left. Casey is there and makes the catch. This is day two of the NCAA baseball tournament. Headlines, SEC, 10 teams advanced to play on Sunday. Of course, 10 teams equals the record. SEC has had that a couple of times before. National seeds were 14-1 and one on Friday. That was yesterday. Except here. Cincinnati upset Oregon State. And home runs are up here in the tournament compared to last year. For more coverage of the Division I baseball tournament, interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com. Collins. This is Casey, and he makes the catch. Beavers need runs. Adley Rutschman will lead it off. This may be the last at bat for Adley Rutschman as a Beaver, and the crowd here on their feet. Rutschman lines one, foul. Creighton has a 4-1 lead over Oregon State. Most people feel the number one overall pick of the Major League Draft on Monday night. Most people feel the best player in college baseball. 
Led the Beavers to a national championship last year. You know, Rich, yesterday he had five plate appearances. Been up there again today. Think about it this way. He's been intentionally walked whenever there's somebody on base. Only one team has pitched to him. With somebody on base, and that was Creighton earlier today. Other than that, he's either let off an inning like this, he gets to hit. There's somebody on base. For the most part, he's getting walked. It's a tremendous amount of respect. Fastball up. The other thing about Atlee, I didn't talk about, he's one of the team captains for this Oregon State team, and they do a vote prior to the season. When they did his vote for him, out of all the votes, he had 38, 38 players. He had 37 yeses. They wanted him as captain. Rutschman to center and deep. Hannafin back, and he makes the catch. 400 feet from home plate, Adley Rutschman heads to the dugout, and they stay on their feet. So to finish that thought, uh, the whole team voted for him to be a captain. 38 players. He had 37 yeses for him. The one guy he didn't get was himself because he can't vote for himself. Here's Phillips. And John Sikowski looked good out of the bullpen. Misses outside. Golden Spikes Award. It's essentially the Heisman Trophy of college baseball. Bandy's J.J. Blinde, Rutschman, Noah Song, terrific player for Navy, and Andrew Vaughn, who won the award last year. That ball is cranked, but foul. So, the ovation for Rutschman, the emotion here in Corvallis. But on the other side, here is Creighton, the Big East champ. Red hot getting here, shut out yesterday. Difficult atmosphere for a road team. But they're up 4-1. And this is a team that thrived in environments like this. They were 21 and five, 21 and five on the road this year. Breaking ball, ground ball at short. Strunts, two outs. Let's check in with Chris Cotter. Chris. If you like haircuts, stick around because tonight for Cincinnati, one of the great mullets in the game, the Bearcats left fielder Joey Weimer, who had two big hits last night and drew the ire of the crowd, rocking the mullet in left field. Remember, he made the, that incredible diving catch late. He'll be back at it tonight. Cincinnati and Michigan here in Corvallis. The defending national champs might be down to their last four outs here. Knocked into right center field. Zach Taylor. And Taylor continues to swing it well. And the crowd. The crowd, this crowd knows baseball. What they're responding to is the effort and the fact that this team won't quit. They know Zach Taylor has struggled. But the last two days, starts swinging the bat. They gave him a nice ovation. Well deserved. Mendezona now. This team is still not out of it. You're only three runs down. I mean, the trick now is as many base runners as you can. See if you can roll it over. Get Adley back up there. Next inning. This inning. Mendezona takes a strike. 
And I think the ovation that the crowd is giving Adley is terrific. It also might be premature, right? I mean, that's respect it. John Sikowski pitching here. You mentioned it earlier about all the different arm angles. Pitching coach Eric Wordekemper was telling me for Sikowski they have eight different signs that they send in through the catcher. Liner left. Piece of cake for Upton. 4-1 Creighton headed to the ninth. The NCAA Baseball Regionals is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? The ovation for Adley Rutschman in his last at bat, possibly as a beaver. Ovation, acknowledgement. Oregon State three outs away from being eliminated. The defending national champs down 4-1 to Creighton. The Blue Jays out of the Big East have been a road monster this year. And they're showing it here in a tough environment in Corvallis. Parker Upton, two great catches in left, one to the wall, one in front of him. Smacks that one foul. Dylan Pierce continues on for Oregon State. Grant Gambro, four and a third. Gave up three runs, two of them earned. Later on tonight here in Corvallis. Certainly everybody's Cinderella after last night. Cincinnati against Michigan. One of those teams is going to emerge from the night at 2-0. Pop to shallow center. Preston Jones slides second base. It's going to be a bloop double, and we check in with Chris Potter. Chris? Great storylines across the landscape of college baseball. Day two of the NCAA tournament. These are the regionals. One team advances out of each of the 16 regionals to the super regionals where you match up two teams who play the best two of three with the winner of that advancing to the College World Series in Omaha. Eight teams arrive in Omaha. Only one wears the crown. Oregon State last year. They were down to their, what, last out last year in game two against Arkansas. That pop-up that fell down the right field line kept them alive. They won that game and then had that great shutout and a 5-0 win in the deciding game three. Kevin Abel, of course, was the starter for Oregon State in that game. He's been hurt most of the year and out. The Beavers lost a ton of talent in the Major League Draft, and they've lost some really good starting pitchers to injury this year. Jake Holton waiting. And a mighty rip by Holton. Talking about the, the loss of that pitching and a, a somebody like a Kevin Abel who you anticipated coming in being a starter, all of a sudden he goes down. And some of your guys out of the pen had to throw so many early innings that they ended up pretty tired come month of May, and they had to sit. And that goes to that record. All of a sudden, you know, that f losing or their record 5-8 and eight down the stretch, things like that, a lot of that can go right to the pitching staff. That one caught by Bo Phillip and an out here. Sports Center tonight, Women's College World Series. Barry Melrose joins the show to break down game three 
for the Stanley Cup Finals from St. Louis. What adjustments will the Warriors make? What adjustments will the Raptors make before game two? And with Clayton Kershaw on the mound, the teams with the best records in the National League square off. Sports Center after softball on ESPN and the ESPN app. Pitching change for Oregon State. 4 1 Creighton in the ninth. Jake Mulholland. Number 24, Will Robertson. Mulholland's numbers terrific. An ERA of under two. Dylan Pierce on his way out. Another loud and long standing ovation for the senior right hander who pitched well in relief. Ball's crunched but foul. Robertson is doubled. Walked a couple times, hit by a pitch. Mulholland appeared last night, inning in a third. Gave up a run. That was a, a costly one. That was in the ninth. Well, he can't do that now. I mean, he, right at this point, Oregon State cannot give up the run at second base. Jake has been interesting. I've been able to watch him ever since he was a freshman. And seeing him first pitch, I truly thought he was going to be a starter for this team. But what has happened is they've had so many kids come in that are so good. Even next year, they have some freshmen coming in throwing mid-90s. They threw him into the bullpen kind of as an experiment, and he was terrific out of the back end of that bullpen. Especially the first, like his sophomore year when he went in there, he was able to come out of the bullpen because he had started to go three, four innings if they needed to. Long starts on a Friday and able to come back on a Sunday. He's just found a nice home in the back end of that bullpen. Very effective. Liner, leaping catch. Taylor to second. Double play. To the bottom of the ninth now, and the last chance for the defending national champs. Really nice play by Zach Taylor. You know, one of the hardest things to do as a base runner, and, you, and your coach tells you right there. He says, hey, freeze on a line drive, but everything in your body is telling you to, to go or take a couple more steps. And in this case, heads up play by Zach Taylor. It only took one step off. It's a tough play as a base runner, believe it or not. Last year, of course, Oregon State backs to the wall so many times. Six elimination games. But in the end, they were national champs. Matt Cronin is one out away from giving Arkansas their first ever national title. Popped up. Shaddy's over there. So's Gate. Nobody gets it. Oregon State given another lifeline. Game three for the championship. Rutschman picks up his 15th hit. Boy, has he been a difference maker. Kevin Abel making it look too easy against a great team. One out away from a college World Series title. So three days. More than Abel. Kevin Abel. He retires the last 20, and he picks up his 10th strikeout, and the Beavers are on top of the college baseball world again. So the question is now, in this elimination game, right out of the shoot here in the NCAA tournament on day two, do they have any more magic left? Seven, eight, nine in the order. Adley Rutschman is due up sixth in this inning. And as you pointed out, if you can get him to the plate, that's got to be the goal right now for Oregon State. John Sikowski's been outstanding out of the bullpen. His career high in innings in an appearance is three and two thirds. He would match that if he finishes this game. And there's the different release points that we've talked about that Ed Service has emphasized with his bullpen. Three quarters, side arm. All over, right? It's, they told us three slots. How do you teach three slots? 
Nasty breaking ball. Andy Armstrong goes down swinging. He's a leverage pitcher. I mean, this is what the, and, and Ed Service talked about trying to get a little bit more out of his starter to get to John Sikowski. The question at the start of this Corvallis Regional was could Oregon State get back to Omaha? And they're down to the last two outs. Unfortunately for them, Omaha has come to Corvallis. The Creighton Blue Jays, who play in TD Ameritrade Park, home of the College World Series in Omaha. Last night it was Cincinnati. Today it's Creighton. And it's three and one. We'll see if Joe decides to take again. Three one count. Casey takes down low, and there's a base runner. They'll need another. Rutschman has the helmet on. Jake Ducart will hit for Preston Jones. One way lead at first base. There's no reason to get off very far. Ducart should be taking all the way. Strike one. Good take. And remember, you know, Jake Ducart, who did get quite a bit of playing time in May, is just a freshman. Talking to the coaching staff, they have high hopes for Ducart, not only in the way that he plays, but also as well as being a team leader. Someone who can kind of teach guys that come in. Ducart is a guy that can take on that role. It's a big spot for him here. Top of the order is next. Chopper over the middle. Collins bobbles it. Everybody's safe. Remember that ball in Omaha, that pop-up at Arkansas did not secure. We just saw it and saw the result. Creighton could have ended the day with a double play here. So that door is cracked open a little more. Tyler Malone, Rutschman, two hitters away. Remember now, Malone had his first home run in yesterday's game, been swinging a very hot bat. Up the middle, Collins got one, double play, Creighton wins it. And the defending champs go down in Corvallis. The Blue Jays, the Big East champs, upset Oregon State. 4-1 the final. Collins to Strunz to Holton. And the Blue Jays live to play another day. So look, here's the thing with it's a tough loss and you get a good look at Adley Rutschman. And I think, you know, congratulations to Creighton, but to Adley Rutschman, terrific career here at Oregon State. All the winning that they have done, big hats off to him.